In this video, I wish to recall events going back to 59 years ago regarding the revolution in Zanzibar in which Sultan Jamzid bin Abdallah was overthrown by a poorly organized but determined army led by a Ugandan by the name of John Gideon Okello. British intelligence sources had all along predicted trouble in Zanzibar as they geared towards granting independence to the country. For many years, ill feelings had developed in Zanzibar due to what people considered as historical injustices by the ruling Arab class, it was even made worse by the elections which took place in 1961. Anger was directed towards the Arabs who were accused of massive abuses against the majority black population. Actions that took place in June 1961 sparked off a lot of protests with accusations against the ruling Arab coalition party. The civil disorder led to the death of 68 persons. During the crisis, the Kenya General Service Unit was deployed to Zanzibar for the first time to maintain law and order. During the crisis, radicalized opposition parties in Zanzibar were banned. Furthermore, the ruling class filled the position in the civil service with their own cronies. Policemen of African mainland origin were banned. The dominated government made it clear that they intended to forge closer ties with the Arab world. They developed a paramilitary police to quell any uprising. They had no plans to forge a relationship with black African countries like Tanganyika and Kenya. They proceeded to cut down expenditure for black people's education programs. In this context, a ferocious hatred for Arabs had developed. The British granted independence to Zanzibar and Pemba on 10th December 1963, thus ending the British protectorate. It should be observed that the ruling Arab-dominated party requested for a defense agreement with the Britain to involve a battalion of British soldiers who would be stationed on the... Is also considering that they had not developed a name. This was rejected by the British government as it came too soon after the... man who was to cause mayhem in Zanzibar was a Ugandan bricklayer and painter by the name of John Gideon Okello. He was a true hustler. Okello traveled from Uganda in the 1950s and went through the towns of Soroti, Mbale, Kisumu, Nairobi, Mombasa, and ended up in Ramisi Sugar Factory. It was in Kwale, from an island called Wasini, that he set off to Pemba in 1959. Worked as an adult education teacher for an Arab man until 1963 when he moved to Zanzibar. He was initially a unionist and a member of Zanzibar Pemba Painters Workers Union, and at the same time a member of the Afro Shirazi Party, ASP. All along, he was mobilizing and sensitizing a large number of workers and in the process, preparing to overthrow the Sultan. By 11th January 1964, hundreds of his poorly armed insurgents, supported by recently sacked ex-policemen, began infiltrating the city center. They struck at around 3 p.m. on 12th January 1964. The group, numbering between 600 and 800 men, armed as they were, Attacked Ugunja police station to seize weapons, the radio station and the paramilitary station. They were equipped with knives and machetes. The attack force said with surprise. John Okello led the attack force on Ziwani police station and captured the armory, which included automatic rifles, machine guns, brand guns. By 7 a.m., John Okello announced over the radio calling on the population to rise up against Arabs 
he referred to himself as the field marshal of Zanzibar and Pemba. By 2.30 p.m., Zanzibar town was under the rebels' command. Task force proceeded to rural Zanzibar. They killed tens of thousands of Arabs. Sultan Jamzid bin Abdullah, his family and entourage, moved to Mombasa. Then from Mombasa, they moved to Dar es Salaam. And then later, he moved to Britain. Or finally relocating to Oman. All along, systematic killings were taking place in Zanzibar. The Lord given orders British and American citizens should not be killed. The three plans that were in place, it was only John Gideon O'Kello's plan that succeeded. A revolutionary council was established by the Afro Shirazi Party. Partnership with the Uma Party resulted in the creation of, a, of an interim government. Ume Long was in Dar es Salaam when the revolution took place. Became the president of Zanzibar. Abdul Rahman, known as Babu, became Minister for External Affairs. Okello retained his position as the Field Marshal of Zanzibar the Pem. Okello proceeded to form a Freedom Military Force. Meanwhile, President Julius Nyerere of Tanganyika was calling the shots, sent 300 Tanganyika policemen to Zanzibar to maintain law and order. At the time, President Nyerere called for a meeting in Dar es Salaam. Hello did attend the meeting. Therefore, he was denied entry back to Zanzibar. Tanganyika proceeded to deport him to Kenya, and later he was deported to Uganda. Eventually, Zanzibar and Pemba formed a union with Tanganyika to become Tanzania. The aftermath of the revolution in Zanzibar can be summarized as follows. The revolution was led by a man who was almost unknown by any intelligence organization in the region. He sent shockwaves across East Africa and beyond. It was even an attempt to blame the Cuban government, which had established an embassy in Tanzania a week before the revolution, by claiming that Okello trained in Cuba this was a theory brought by the British intelligence. The truth of the matter is that this demonstrated the failure of the British intelligence. Hello, actually trained in the bush, Hello got hold of guns for the first time after breaking into the armory at Ziwani police station. Again, it is not true that the guns actually came from the armory that was actually meant to supply the freedom fighters who are best in Tanganyika. The violent nature of the revolution in which between 15 and 20,000 persons may have been killed labeled Okello and his Freedom Army as a gang of killers. However, there are many, on the other hand, who have never forgiven the Sultan and his supporters from gross abuse of people in Zanzibar based on Racialism. Another very important point to note was that the Zanzibar Revolution came at the same time with the mutiny of the armies of Tanganyika, Uganda, and Kenya, which took place from 20th to 26th of January 1964. John Okello is said to have addressed the mutineers in Dar es Salaam, who had gone to meet with President Julius Nyerere. Nyerere had gone into a safe haven or a hiding place in Magogoni near Dar es Salaam in order to avoid the mutineers, and hence Nyerere could not meet. His own acknowledgement, Okello said that he asked the mutineers to solve the issues amicably and not rise up against an elected government. It was later used against him as having supported the mutineers. To contain John Okello, Nyerere invited him to Dar es Salaam while arranging with the Karume to block him from going back to Zanzibar. Ganyika deported him to Kenya and later he was deported to Uganda. The government of President Milton Obote put him under surveillance. Okello only resurfaced in February 1971 after the overthrow 
of Dr. Milton Obote in his meeting with Idi Amin at parliamentary grounds. Okello made remarks to support the coup in Uganda and assured him of his support and security. But a few months later, he was arrested, killed, time when Milton Obote's supporters in the army and among the civilians rounded up, who were rounded up in the north, were killed and dumped into the crocodile-infested Machishon Falls. In Malawi, President Kamuzu Banda warned his countrymen of attempts by Mr. Chiome, a former cabinet secretary, in liaison with John Okello, to cause a revolution in Malawi. It was the first time for Malawi to blame a foreign power. Later, John Okello blamed Nyerere and Karume for negotiating a merger of the two countries at the expense of Zanzibar. Lawless judged that Okello came into the scene very fast and equally disappeared very fast. He only lasted for about two months in the leadership of Zanzibar. Then that was it. Okello's role in Zanzibar revolution was erased from history books of Zanzibar and Tanzania in general. The young generation cannot remember anything of him. But the fact remains that Okello is a man of charisma, stamina, and sheer determination. He mobilized a, a force that overthrew the Sultan of Zanzibar. In this context, I have strived to present the scene in Zanzibar before the revolution. Certainly there was a lot of disillusionment, frustration, and disdain. The potential for conflict was always present. The Zanzibari election of January and June 1961 put the population into a revolution footing. The was set off by John Okello. I will make a reference to my other educational materials concerning John Okello. You can access this via my channels. Kindly subscribe, comment, and give a like. I would appreciate. Thank you.